your lustrous golden aura emanating direct from Srimati Radhika's undercountry. Your wiry eyebrows joyfully dancing in Hadinam, Sacred Sun. Gauravani pouring out of every pore of your body. All opulences and cities flowing from your fingertips and dancing at your feet. You, the goddess of fortune, bestowing the real wealth of George Bhakti. O oh, sweet master of my life, daily at your feet. One tear, one tear. I looked into those blue eyes, and lo and behold, I saw the whole spiritual realm in the sky of those eyes. And in the center, in the pupil, was the path to Vrindavan. And on the path I saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the whole Panchatapa and thousands and thousands of associates all joyfully singing the Mahamantra, dancing in great bliss, inviting everyone to join them on their magical mystery tour, the straight and narrow path back to Godhead. All this I saw in those blue eyes. Oh, sweet master of my life, Daily at your lotus feet, one tear, one tear. And then you whispered the Diksha mantra into my ear, transmitting the bewitching sound of Krishna's bhakti directly into my heart, inviting me to enter that most confidential, sacred place, the cleanses of Vrindavan, to eternally serve Radha Krishna Yuga Kishore in great bliss as a beautiful teenage golden girl. Oh, sweet master of my life, daily at your love and peace, one tear, one tear. Kurdev, my heart is like a dense, dark jungle. No harm, baby. Still, we will find the path to bring down. Kurdev, you sent me a test and I failed. I got so angry again. Never mind, Dickie. Just get up and keep on going. <laughs> oh, sweet master, stay here. Try to follow my instructions. I want you to be pure, my dear children, and be rid of all ignorance. I want to put you in the fire, and then with a hammer, I want to hammer you to make you pure. If you are willing to undergo this, then come to me at this time. Otherwise, you should be very, very far away from me. I don't want to cause you any problems. There is no need of going to any important university. We should only go to the school of Gordon Short and Sabi and to the University of Haridas Thakur. That is enough. Krishna can give us anything in this world. We have seen all of you. He had faith in Krishna's name, and his life was miraculous and transformed. Oh, sweet master of my life, Gurudev is encouraging Radharani to meet with Krishna and also catching her when she falls down in ecstasy. Starting from Krishna's perspective. I am restless and distracted. My mind only attracted to thoughts of Radha. I pace in the forest, yearning simply to be blessed by her presence. Her laughing and dancing through the treasures of my ears and eyes. She is full of surprises and delight, and her soft spoken words soothe my fears. I am chastened by her absence. If only she would hasten here, all my troubles and worries would flee, while everything would be clear to me. 
in the brilliant lotus flowering in her love. Meanwhile, Radha, come quickly. Krishna is waiting. He is waiting only for your company. She hears the symphony of gopis and manjaris and throws on a sari in disheveled haste, not waiting to be dressed, then begins to retrace her steps. No, I will be missed. I'd better go back, lest I be chastised and rudely accused. No, Radha, a manjari tugs at her hand. You must understand, Krishna is crying for your association. Come to Krishna, the abode of your heart. You have been too long apart, and he is much disturbed. He will be sorely perturbed if you do not appear. Yes, yes, I will come. You say he is crying? And calling to me? I cannot deny my song. But wait, such is my fate. I have duties at home. I cannot be seen to roam in the forest with that robe. The lot of pulls back towards the door. <coughs> now several gopis argue their case that union with Krishna is the most chaste choice. Back and forth she goes as their anxiety rises with the moon. Until finally Radha relents, follows the messenger sent by her beloved. Now her steps quicken, direction is known. She dances and runs in her exuberance beneath the saffron moon, which she sees with an unblinking eye of golden dust. And Paris, sent by Brinda, urge her to even greater speed. Her hair becomes sweet from the graves and flies in the breeze, dark and silvered by lunar rays. She feels saved by the light, in anticipation of a yearned for reunion. Then there he is at the end of the path, strewn with rose petals, holding a lotus which he twirls in his extended hand as he offers an insouciant smile which slowly spreads across his face. Radha is overcome by a monumental wave of ecstasy and faints into the arms of a protective manjari. Then, through the swirls of darkness, Hear the sandesh sweetness of his voice softly whispering her name in her ear. Radha. She awakens in the arms that sustain the universe. She traverses many flavors of ecstatic love. Krishna, she cries, I am here in the nest, in the nest of your grace where I learned to fly. She strokes her hair, then retwines it in the braids, laced and woven artfully with forest flowers of intoxicating fragrance. No, I prefer it loose, he declares, hugging at the vines and twine until again Radha's locks are an uninterrupted cascade. I think again I will leave and he creates another floral creation in a celebration of her beauty, woven and tied atop her head. Then again he dismantles. Better free like this, see? Rather than her natural wild state here in the wilderness of Raj. And her hair dances in a musical breeze that arises from the mind of Madhava. His face and shoulders swim in strands, and he is smiling in great happiness, sending the manjari to witness, to ride waves of bliss, as if they too are chased by the reservoir of pleasure, as he treasures rising with heart and soul, as playing with her hair, 
and what to speak of all the tattvas, all the tattvas we learn from Sri Vyakti. And therefore, as Srila Gurudev uttered this very beautiful verse this morning, before beginning his class, Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chayva Narotamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Satojayam Udhirai Before reading or studying Srimad Bhagavatam or any Vedic literature, we offer our obeisances to Lord Narayan, to Nar Narayan Rishi, to Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Sri Vyasa, the author. What is the meaning of Vyasa, and how does that relate to Sri Guru? The word Vyasa means diameter. Suppose you have a circumference of a circle, and that circumference is 360 degrees, and you have a center in the middle of that circle. If you draw a diameter from one circumference to another, that line going to the center and then touching the other side of the circumference is Vyas. And it not only touches in one place, it touches everywhere, all along the 360 degrees. So everywhere means throughout the entire material creation. This is not the only planet where living beings, intelligent living beings reside. But there are millions of planets, billions of planets in this universe, and there are billions upon billions of universes as we understand from the Vedic literature. So Vyas is he who broadcasts that center of all existence, Sri Sri Radha and Krishna, to everywhere, all throughout the material creation. So Sri Guru is a manifestation of Sri Vyas to bring his glory and the glory of his Lord Radha and Krishna as presented by Srila Vyasas and all the manifestations of Vyasas, mainly our Rupa Nuga Guru Varga. Sri Guru broadcasts the message of the love of Sri Radha and Krishna all throughout the entire creation. Therefore, disciples see Sri Guru like Krishna, not God, but like God, a manifestation of God, and therefore, also, as an invocation to his class, Srila Gurudev uttered this mantra, Yam ka vrajam sa manu peta ma peta kristyam vai payano viraka taru ajuhava Sri Guru, like Sukadeva Goswami, who is also like God, is in the heart of all living entities. Sri Guru is Sarva Bhuta Sikam. He is situated everywhere just like Krishna. Srila Gurudev also said another thing, that was his first time that he said it. He said, somebody asked me a question that I've never been answered before, that I've never been asked before, and I gave an answer that I never gave before. They asked me, where is your Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Kapoor Prabhupada now? And so I answered, he's everywhere. Because it is today, Sri Sri Radha and Krishna are performing their pastimes everywhere. They travel throughout infinite number of universes in this material world. And they have an infinite number of pastimes in the spiritual world. So how can they be without their servitors? So he said that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is as Srimati Radhika's maidservant everywhere. And then as her glance or eyes upon this world, he manifests everywhere here. So similarly, our Srila Gurudev is also everywhere. And in that regard he said, so therefore nobody can cheat him. 
If anybody tries to cheat Sri Guru, he himself becomes cheated. He gave the analogy, suppose you come here and I ask you, oh, how are you? And you say, I'm fine. No problem? No, no problem. You don't mention that aside from your wife, you also have a girlfriend that you're having loving relationships with him, with. So Sri Guru knows that because he's in the heart. And therefore that problem that we're hiding from him, he said, comes in like an atom, I'm sorry, comes in like a needle and goes out like an atom bomb. And one whole bhakti is destroyed. In the very first day of this glorious festival, Srila Gurudev had various devotees quoting and explaining the very important verse by Srila Rupa Goswami defining pure bhakti or pure devotion to Radha and Krishna. There we find Anakuryena Krishna Anusilanam. Anusilanam. Anusilanam means continually endeavoring by the body, mind, words, and pure sentiments of the heart. And it also means under guidance of Sri Guru. So Guru is also Krishna Anusilanam. Sri Guru is also Krishna. What Krishna? He's Ashraya Krishna. There's two Krishnas. Vishaya Krishna, that is the object of love, and Ashraya Krishna, the reservoir of love. So Srila Gurudev explains on his Vyasa Puja day in Florida that all the parts of this verse that is giving up all desire for fruit of activity, that cover bhakti, giving up mental speculation, impersonal consideration, and even ultimately the knowledge that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, engaged in all kinds of favorable activities exclusively with the body, mind, words, and sentiments of the heart, exclusively to the pleasure of Krishna. This should be applied, every single phrase should be applied to Sri Guru as Ashraya Krishna, and then automatically that love becomes transferred to Vishaya Krishna. So Sri Guru is omniscient, all-knowing. He's not Krishna, but he's Sarvajya, he's all-knowing, and he's Sri Kalagya. That is, he knows everything past, present, and future. On his first Harikata festival, that is in Holland, Srila Gurudev said, Why are you going to astrologers? You don't have to go to any astrologers. If you just come to me, I can simply look in your forehead and I can tell you 10,000 births, past and future. A few years ago in Hawaii, also the time of Srila Gurudev's Vyasa Puja festival, he said that Guru means heavy. Guru is the most heavy personality in the world or in the universe. In fact, he said in fact, he's heavier even than Krishna. We find in the beautiful book written by Srila Jayadev Goswami, Gita Govinda, that Krishna utters this prayer to Srimati Radhika. Smaragaravakandanam mamashirashimandanam Devi Parapalavam Mudaram O Srimati Radhika, please be merciful to me. Be liberal. I'm burning in the fire of separation from you. Please be merciful. Forgive my offense and please place your lotus feet on my head. So very interestingly, Srila Gurudev explained that Krishna does not only say this to Srimati Radhika, but he also says it to those maidservants of Srimati Radhika who prefer to serve her over him. That means Krishna falls down at the feet and takes the dust of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika's maidservants or Sri Guru. Gurudev said, this is Guru Tattva. 
all the Acharyas and our Rupa Nuga Guru Parampara are ultimately made servants of Srimati Radhika. In, as you know, Srila Gurudev is dictating, or just finished actually, dictating Radha Panchajaya. Srimad Bhagavatam is the life of all living entities and it takes away all anarthas. Anartam Upashamam Shakshat Bhakti Yoga Madhok Sajay Lokasya Ajanataha Vidvam Shakre Satsvatisamhita All the anarthas that cause sinful activities, that cause transmigration through 8,400,000 species of life can all be wiped away in one moment by Bhakti Yoga. But the whole world does not know this. Lokasya Ajanataha. And therefore, the great sage, Krishna's right hand of Yad, has written this Srimad Bhagavatam. So, uh, I forgot why I said that. Yes, so Srimad Bhagavatam takes away all the bad reactions and gives all the viciousness to the living being. As in the body, the most important part are the light airs. The five light airs of Srimad Bhagavatam are Rat Panchajai, the five chapters dealing with the Ratalila. And the most important light air of those light airs is three Gopi Geet. In his commentary to the first verse of Gopi Geet, Srila Gurudev explains that Srila Viswanath Chakrabarti Thakur, before beginning his commentary, and Srila Jiva Goswami does as well, they say that no one can understand any tattvas, and particularly the sublime relationship of Radha and Krishna, and our relationship with Radha and Krishna, and their pastimes, and there's no possibility to enter into their understanding without the gracious maidens without the mercy of those gopis who've actually taken part in that Rasalila and who are actually singing Gopi Geet. So Gurudev says, therefore, Srila Vishwana Chakrabarti Thakur, before beginning his commentary, first offers his obeisances to the predecessor Acharya who wrote commentary. That is Sridhar Swami, Srila Jiva Goswami, and then he's offering obeisances to Srila Narakam Das Thakur, Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, and all of our Acharyas, who, in their sudden form, have come like Srila Gurudev to give all tattvas, uh, Maya tattva, Bhagavad tattva, Prem tattva, all tattvas, all the way up to Madanasya Mahabhav. Because they are in their sadhak form, like this, and in their siddha form, they took part in the Rath, Kalila, helping Radharani when her ankle bells fly off to dance over to the ankle bells and bring them back and put them on Srimati Radhika before Krishna even notices so that the dance can go on. So Srila Gurudev, as he said this morning, what is today? It's my Vyasa Puja. My Vyasa Puja. That's not a note of pride. He's saying this is my opportunity to worship my Guru, to teach you how to worship my Guru and all the Guru Parampara. And I'll just close by saying how Gurudev closed his class by saying that I am nothing, I am insignificant. All the knowledge that I'm giving to the world is actually my Gurudev's knowledge. He has given that to me. He has picked me up out of the um, well of stool and from him I received the ocean of mercy of Sri Bhakti Rishamrita Sindhu and Sri Ujjala Nilamani, which I'm giving to the world. And all tattvas, all the, everything that I'm giving you, I've received all the way up to Prem, Sneha, and all the way up to Madanakya Mahabhav. So in his very humble way, he's indirectly admitting his position for our, uh, our mercy, for our Thank you. Om 
if you serve Krishna directly, this mental Siddhi Bhakti Bhana is Shankara or Chitta Sevila Machita means invariable to never fall down. Krishna, if you also him directly, you may get perfection or not, there is so much doubt. But if you or he or serve his Kirtan King, means Manasar Gurudev, then perfection in Krishna prayer in your hand, none can check him. Another scripture I just quoted, Shiksha Guru Kajali Krishna in Saru. In fact, Guru Krishna Rupan Sastri Pramani is mentioned about Shiksha Guru. And Guru Krishna Rupan Sastri Pramani means Shiksha Guru and Shiksha Guru Kajali Krishna in Saru means Shiksha Guru. Both are same. Yeah. Sometimes two personalities, sometimes one personality. But if both two personalities are there, and they are in the same platform, you have to respect it clearly. Otherwise, you may do blunder, mistake, or you are bound to do a regret of hand. Just like the Billa Mokan Thakur told, Shikha Gurusta Bhagavan Sikitin Samoli, by whom I initiated, he is my Diksha Guru, and all other Guru Parampara, even Sri Jankanda Mahaprabhu, Bhagavan Sikhita Ola, Shikha Guru. So, how we can tell my Shikha Guru is? superior and sexual is inferior, the regret of man. But in Bhajan, prominence of the Shiksha Guru is there. Although Bhagavan Shiksha Guru will not come to you to pull your Shiksha from this material world to engage in Bhajan, who is doing this? Shiksha Guru. So prominence of Shiksha Guru is there. Still, you could not go. He is superior and inferior than you do blunder mistake. And who is Guru there? It is mentioned by Sikhaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sri Lanka Sanatana Swami. Sayamuru Sadekatmaru Abhyastarana Prathame Kindu Te Rahen Bhagavan. Sayamuru means Sayam Krishna. Sadekatmaru means with little bit difference in complexion and mood. So Sadekatmaru lies the Baladev Prabhu. Abhyast, Sayam Bhagavan Krishna want to do some activity in this world. So he empowered some power in him and sent him in this world to do some power they call Adesh Avatar. Like Sithu Maharaj, Adesh Avatar of Palang Shakti, how to run in the world. Narasimhi is Adesh Avatar of Bhakti Shakti. In the Parasudam, so many are Adesh Avatar. In the same way, who is being in line of Narasimhi and spreading the Harikatha and is, according to scripture, he is one of his Gurudev, he is Adesavatara of Bhakti Shakti of Bhagavan. So one of his Guru, our beloved Gurudev is Adesavatara of Bhagavan Bhakti Shakti. Today Gurudev was discussing in our devotees also about three types of seva. Uttam seva, who knowing the heart of Gurudev and fulfill his desire is Uttam seva. As Sri Rupa Saipar, what he did? Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam, Fatitam Jena Bhutale, Sanya Rupa Kadamayam, Dadatisa Padantikam. What Mahaprabhu wants to do, Sri Rupa Saipar, by scripture and by followers, he did so in this world, so he put some seva. Okay, someone can say, oh, Rupa Saipar, he can say, oh, Mahaprabhu Saipar, Bhagavan, is the example in this world nowadays? Yes, so many. Sila Bhakti Sikhanda Sarasari Thakur Prabhupada is Guru Dev. Our spiritual grandfather, Sila Bhakti Kakran Kesavva Sai Maharaj, and Sila Bhakti Radhan Swami Maharaj, what that is? When Prabhupada started teaching, at that time, the birthplace of Sikhanda Sarasari Thakur Mahaprabhu and the control of Mahamedan. Prabhupada desire was that must be some in our control. Sri Param Guru Dev, he was son of a great landlord. Knowing the heart of Prabhupada, what he did? He grew some trees like mango and other jackfruit in a deep, deep cell. And when it grown in a little bit like three years, four years, he took sky. Then all of a sudden, what he did? By the grace of Sri Sri Prabhupada Sri Thakur, he took his own god brother and take all the graveyard, dig them and throw in the Ganges. In the night he put all these trees 
and rose up from his power. Next time Muslim came, they find that it's no career, not, no sign at all. Then they were to pull it. When the police officer came, he said, this garden from trees is not happening in one night. How come? He did report it seems to be a garden for few years. By this, our Param Guru then fulfilled Prabhupada's desire. And moreover, the Bhajan Kuti of the Bhakti Vinod Thakur was under capture of Sahaj years. Prabhupada's desire was to take in our control. Param Guru then, he took some coward men who were very expert in playing and, and sick. He sent them and told, Oh, Pinapabu is coming, Pinapabu is coming. 